Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, in our brief survey through the book of 1 John, we come to a passage that really started this study. If you go back to the very first, uh, which is just three or four days ago, but you go back to the very first video that we did um, from One a Day for the Soul, in the book of 1 John, you'll discover that we addressed verse 15 and 16, and that's what we're going to do today. But because we've already addressed that, and so I invite you to go back and see that if you, if you haven't seen it. Let's just read it. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Let me repeat that. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. Love simply means to desire, to passionately seek and pursue and invest yourself in. Now, that's what love is, right? If you're going to love another person, those are the things that you would do. Spend time with, devote yourself to these things. And that's what it says. It says, do not love the world. Do not pursue them. Do not desire them. Do not spend time in them. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Now, listen to this. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But friends, I got to tell you, this strikes fear in my heart, my heart for myself and my heart for so many others who think that they're okay and they're not. I mean, remember the words of Jesus, many travel the broad road, the widely accepted road, the popular road. Many travel that road, both sinner and so-called saint, but few, few are those who find the narrow path. When it says narrow path, it's almost like a tightrope. There's not even room enough on this road barely to walk side by side. And so when we think about the majority of people who attend church service every Sunday, read a Bible, pray, if you ask them if they believe in Jesus, if they were going to heaven, they would say yes. They acknowledge him certainly. But does their life reflect that of a follower? will take these warnings seriously, friend. If you love the world, desire the world, spend time in the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. And if the love of the Father is not in you, you will not be part of his kingdom. For look what it says in 16. All that is in the world, everything, everything that is in the world falls into one of three categories. The lust of the flesh, your flesh craves it and lusts after it. The lust of the eye. Your eye sees it and wants it, desires it, covets it. And the pride of life. You want to be more. You want to feel better about yourself. These are dangerous, friends, and these are things that we are born with. But as we are reborn into the spirit and the kingdom of God, we are warned against such things. I pray that you go back and you listen to this again and you really let time stand still and you really focus upon these things because this is the word of God. This is the almighty screaming, warning, and so few are listening. So many that are deceived, so many think that they're okay and they're not. So let's go back to the words of Messiah in the book of Matthew. And let's look at verse 37. He says, he that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Now just stop and reflect and think about these things. He that loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. But now this is the passage that really grips my soul. You could almost say it haunts me. He that does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Why? Because of these words. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. He that finds his life shall lose it. What does that mean? That means we wake up every morning happy 
feeling blessed because of the things that we have accomplished in this life and the things that we have gained in this life. You know, there's, there's no bumper sticker that says, he who has the most toys wins. That mentality, he who finds his life shall lose it. Have you found your life in your family? Have you found your life in your social settings? Have you found your life in your home? The things that you surround yourself with? Have you found your life in the way that you lead your life? Or have you lost your life for his sake? Again, Jesus said, what is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Which could also be said, what is it to lose the whole world and gain your soul? Day after day after day, we bring you these lessons in showing you how these passages have been glossed over. They have been missed for far too long. They're not being preached and taught in the pulpits today because it's not popular. But this is the message of the Almighty to you and me, friends, so that we can make ourselves ready for his kingdom. He that finds his life shall lose it. If I were to ask you to describe to me someone who has found their life, you would probably describe to me someone who has a good family, has a strong career, has enough money in the bank and is ready for retirement. Somebody who has achieved the things that this world considers success. But Jesus says, he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Friends, I hope these words hang over you like a dark cloud on a rainy day. And they force you down upon your knees in confession before your God and King and that you'll get up ready to abandon all so that he can use you for the purpose of his kingdom and for the purpose that he so chooses. Chew on these words today, friend. Ponder these words today. Meditate on these words today. Do not let them lightly go into one side of your head and out the other. If he said it, it's important. What is he trying to communicate to you today? That is the question you must ask. I pray that he'll lead you, friend, and that he'll guide you into the deepest things that he has ready to reveal unto you. And as he wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.